Um, so in the first episode, you talked about how um, when you're going through your very first episode also, mm -hmm. that I yelled at you and you snapped out of it. Mm -hmm. And then again, that happens, I think it was in your third episode. What do you um, mean? Your third mental oh, episode. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That happened again when you were listening to a Jordan Peterson podcast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, <clears throat> as I remember it, mm -hmm. I like snapped out of it and then it was gone. But when I look back through my journals, I don't think that was the case. Well, I remember you calling me. Yeah, I remember telling you about and it. And telling me. And uh -huh. you were, your spirits were greatly lifted. But also later in your podcast, you talk about needing evidence that everything's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. Is that what that was for you? Yeah. Yeah. It's evidence. It's like concrete evidence that somebody, yes. That's exactly what it is. Okay. And I think maybe that was easier to... You yelling at me, that wouldn't have worked later. As I get older, I'm less open to your suggestion, <laughs> I think, or just, you know. No, no, that's good not, for me. What do you mean? <laughs> well, that's good for me. Like, I worry. So you've moved on to people who have more experience than me. You're well, speaking, not, uh, yes, different experience. I, I don't know about just... He had been through what I had been through. So you not having gone through that, although it's not like you haven't gone through it at all. It's not like if someone just, it, it no, it's that not just anyone can tell me it's going to be okay. Yeah, I know. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. So what are you getting at? So I'm going to circle back to that. You'll see what I'm getting at. Um, Got it. There's a method to my madness. Okay. So you also talk about this last episode number four. Let's call them battles. We'll talk about battle number four. Okay. Um, you said you weren't drinking to excess. Alcohol's been, mm. I think, somewhat of a catalyst in all of them, but but one. I would agree. So you said you weren't drinking to excess, but you were drinking. Mm -hmm. And also... And, well, when it happened, I drank to excess. Okay, well, so, but you also saw this coming because you told me back then you knew what was happening. You knew what was coming because... What do you mean? Back when? Before this happened. Just before... In, the months, in the months preceding I don't Battle think I, 4. What did I say? I saw something else coming. I think I said I was just off the path. Yes, that's what I was going to say. So you wanted to slow down. You wanted to... Um, like take the foot off the gas of everything. You wanted to be more mindful and you did the complete and utter opposite. You started eating whatever you wanted. You started drinking again. You started not giving a crap about sleep. You just like did the yeah. complete opposite. Yeah, ramped up the coffee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So do you remember that? Yeah. Do you remember why you did that? I think I just saw no other choice. I think, well, it wasn't that I saw no other choice. Oh, hold on. I don't even know if I meant that. <laughs> I think the only other option, in my mind, it was either be productive, mm -hmm. have high output, mm -hmm. or some output, or go into rehab, not actual rehab, but my own rehab, a rehab phase, and then be yeah. much less productive, and that scared me. So it was about your career. Yeah. It was okay. about, okay, I'm just going to drink caffeine oh. to be able to work. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to drink alcohol to be able to be social. Not to be able to be social, but like. To be able to hang. Yeah. To be as social as other people. To go out. And to be clear, I'm not antisocial. Even when I'm exhausted and not in the mood, I can participate. I just don't like it. And so like one beer would make it fun. Tolerable. Yes. Even fun. It would go from like, I don't want to be here to, oh, this is pretty cool. And uh, yeah, anyway, I just wanted to keep living life. I didn't want to slow down and like take a break. I'm not good at that. That makes me uncomfortable thinking about not being productive. 
Do you remember why you wanted to do the complete opposite of what you did? Did you just know that that was the path that you should be on, slowing down and being more methodical about stuff? And Because I remember you talking about that. So do you remember what that mindset was? What do you mean? Well, when I say that you did the complete opposite of what you were talking about, the complete opposite was what you did. I was talking Pedal about... to the metal. But before that, you were talking about going slower, um, slowing down your life, like being more methodical, like doing experiments. Yeah. Um, I don't remember when that was. Was that when... I don't remember why either. I just remember you telling me that's what you wanted to do, and then instead you did the opposite. Um, I mean, I kind of started playing with that. I think... My point is I think you yeah, know what you need, and you didn't listen to yourself. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's all. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I could agree with that. I don't think I've ever disagreed with that. Okay. Um, but it's hard because I go back and forth because when I think that I know what I need and I try to create a program for myself to get better, sometimes I go too far. I'm kind of like an all or nothing. I'm not an all or nothing person. It's like, it's the addict mindset. It's like, I'm either going to like, it It needs to feel like a big epic attempt. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, like, what am I going to incrementally get better? And I just wasn't willing to do that. So I think I went the other way. Because I did do those few weeks where I didn't watch any TV. I was only reading books. I, didn't mm -hmm. have, I, don't, I think I stopped doing caffeine. I was waking up early. Mm-hmm. And then I tried to do, also the sleep led to it. The I think it was just too hard. I was like, I don't know how to fix my sleep. I lost faith that I was going to be able to fix my sleep. And I knew that that was a imperative if I was going to be able to, to sustain a really boring rehabilitation schedule. So you just went the other way. So okay. I was just like, fuck it. If I don't get to sleep, then I'm going to do the bad things and make it easier. And then I kind of forgot temporarily that I thought before alcohol sent me into a really bad place. If I had remembered, if I had just had one day of like how it felt before, I would have been like, oh, I'm not even drinking. Really? You think so? Yes. Okay. It had been well, seven I mean, I years. I never went back to that dark place for seven years. If I had really experienced it for one day, I would have ran the other way. I would have been like, I'm getting better right now. I mean, that's what I did. That's what happened. I, yeah, I know. I, I know. I think within literally minutes of this last episode beginning, I was like, okay, I give it all up, all of it. Well, of course, but it's happened how many times? You just seems like it would stick in your brain there. I think you always try to talk yourself out of the fact that that is part of the perfect storm. Yeah. That's an alcohol. And yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. So because <laughs> now we have it documented. <laughs> even some people still will try to talk me out of it, like professionals. I think there's psychologists who are like, I don't know. If sure. It's yes. But the it's theme just you. Of this it's whole... like they're trying to point like it's just a thing that you go through and maybe it's not the alcohol and maybe you don't deprive yourself of all of the joys in life. Just because, like, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen. But also... And there's no evidence you know that yourself. alcohol causes those things. It's so insane. Let's just, for a second, I'm okay. just right. playing devil's okay. advocate. I'm just, I agree. I'm never going to drink again. We already know this. I already agree. Okay. I'm never going to drink again. Not a drop. But... Pretty much normal. Mm -hmm. I get really drunk one time and then an instant... All of a sudden, life is meaningless and I'm empty and it's the darkest depression ever. Like, that's insane. Like, to well, when you explain say one that time, jump. What do you mean one time? You mean like. Well, it's not like I'm drinking all the time. I'm feeling normal and then all of a sudden I just tip over the edge. 
It's not like a like, oh, I keep drinking and it's affecting me. It's weird. It's not a gradual like fall off. It's just like it's like I hit a threshold of right. bad behavior and then all of a sudden I'm just. Okay. We could keep exploring this whole thing of drinking. I have millions of questions around it, but anyway. let's just, it's, we've exhausted it. I just think that- It's just a really, and that's part of the reason I started the podcast, is because my experiences are so fucking weird and obscure and no one can explain them, right. that I want other people to be warned, just because there's no evidence of <laughs> yes. something you've gone through being that's the exactly reason you go, you just like this. you have to trust yourself. Yes. Yes. Okay. Right. So you already know that. Yeah. Oh, so let's talk about the one but incident it helps to be that you had on the plane during the middle of your battle or mm-hmm. the, at the beginning of your battle mm-hmm. where you conquered your claustrophobia. Yeah. Your claustrophobia. Mm-hmm. Do, do you have any insight into that since then? No. No, I was really motivated to... What happens is if it doesn't like... It's just because I was on such a high and I felt normal. And then all of a sudden, like four hours later, I was back in the dark place. And I was like, well, what was that? Nothing then? So it's it's easy for me to just like throw it away and dismiss it. Like part of me dismisses it. Yeah. Because I obviously have acknowledged verbally several times that it was like a pretty profound experience. And it means something, even if it didn't last. But I don't have any new insight into it. Maybe it was just a gift in the moment that you needed. Yeah, but I also think it was a, it seemed like a, it wasn't just like a one-time gift. It was like access to something. It was like a preview of like, you can go here. This is a place you can access through will. That you practice. Have, have not, not since. Um, no, but in my defense... Well, have you needed it in that way since then? No. There, well, no, there hasn't been much opportunity because I just recently in the last, I don't know how long ago did I quit coffee? A couple months ago? A month ago? I have six weeks, eight I weeks. Know. I literally have no fucking clue. That's episode 11. We'll get there. Well, if we can look at the date, I think it was only a couple of days after that. Anyway. Oh, you said three or three days in, I think. At I wasn't point. ready to go out and just start conquering fears. I think I was in too fragile of a place. So I didn't follow that up with like, okay. Because it's not like I can just access that when I'm just sitting feeling miserable. There has to be some kind of extreme, right, right, right. You know, thing mm-hmm. that I have to overcome. I overcome it, and then people are really going to have to be familiar with the previous episodes to understand some of the things we're talking about. That's kind of the point. Maybe they should revisit them. Or I guess we could give a brief explanation. Okay. <laughs> of the things. <laughs> Okay. Um, that would make it really long. No. I mean, just like that one we talked about was I was on a tiny plane in the middle of my depressive episode. I was already claustrophobic on planes. That's why I drank in the first place to get to get through the flight to Hawaii that caused the episode. <clears throat> and I was overwhelmed and I was sick of being afraid. And I, instead of distracting myself with my phone and headphones, I decided to like look the fear in the face as much as I could. And it just disappeared. And it felt miraculous. And I was on a high for like four hours. It sounds miraculous. Um, at 24 minutes and 55 seconds in your first episode, <laughs> uh-huh. you say, I'm paraphrasing, is there a way I can do suicide without traumatizing my family? <laughs> the answer to that is no. <laughs> <laughs> Minimizing I, the trauma. I have thoughts on this. That you want to share? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I know you went there. I mean, that's in the episode. That's why you said that. You were just no. I know. I wasn't planning it. I was just being. Um, I always go to the extremes. I know that was your thought process. So I immediately went to okay, that could happen. Right. If it did happen. Is then there I go, yeah, no. I explore all the things. A nice little note. <laughs> no, okay. not a uh, some gifts. I don't know. I just wonder, has anybody ever done it and left a video where they were like, look, guys, it's all good. Right. This time around sucked. 
And I'm going to take an easy way out, but it's not over. That's a good question. It's sorry. hard to imagine. It's hard to imagine. Do you think somebody being in that uh, clear headed of a state and doing that? Yeah. Well, I think it has probably happened. Humans are incredible. Sure. And I think if anyone was going to do it, it'd be me. I'm never going okay. to do it, but I'm saying if anyone could. Let's not have that experiment. Well, part of the reason I talked about suicide a lot was because. I was terrified of it. And I think that being so afraid of it makes it worse. Sure. You also talk about having a good relationship with death, which we'll go over as yeah. well. The Stoics talk about how if, how you can avoid happiness or like, I guess happiness by desiring it too much, even if you're doing all the right things. Oh. That there is utility you in letting go. By yeah, you desiring can, it too much. Yeah, that there is utility in not holding on to life so tightly. Right. And I think the same thing applies to being alive. Sure. Actual life. Anything you want that badly. Yeah. It, Even if it's just to live. Right. That being so afraid of death prevents you from living. And so. Yeah, right, true. I mean, look at all the thrill seekers out there. I'm sure they're not afraid of death. They're having a great time. Mm, I'm sure some of them are afraid of death. <laughs> they just like... It's worth it? Yeah. Then they're not afraid of it. Well, yeah, anyway, okay. Anyway, okay. Um. Oh, at 2650 in episode one, you talk, you say this can be a gift, meaning the battles that you're going through. Yeah, the experience of good. depression. Right. Um, I think it's probably hard for a lot of people to feel like that, but you're a seeker. You always have been. You've fought your way out of every one of these episodes. You've never really sat still. In fact, at your worst, the last thing you would do is sit still. I mean, you would get up and... Because that's the only way I know how to deal with it. But I don't know if that's like a... I don't know if that's worth any kind of praise. Like some people have the ability to hibernate and heal. That's true. I just can't. That's scarier for me. It's just really something to watch though. If you're not that person, it's the same thing with you being tired, how you can just overcome. You're exhausted, but you still go for your run. You still do what you have to do. I am the opposite of that. And so it's, it's um, inspiring to me. And I'll take the compliment, take the but again, I'm not being modest when I say I don't know if that is an example. It's fine. Noise is fine. Uh, I don't know if that's an example of me being like having a miraculous will or being brave as much as it is a manifestation of my addictive personality. It's more uncomfortable for me to sit. It's not like I'm like, this is the right thing to do. I literally am just like, this feels awful. This isn't helping. So I'll do anything. Like, do I have to run? Fine. I'd rather feel better. I don't want to be uncomfortable or sad or stuck in my thoughts. It's a distraction. Okay. It's just like a healthy distraction. Does yeah, that make it's sense? very healthy. Yeah, of course. Yes, but but there are so many people who don't do the healthy thing because whatever reason, lazy, tired, can't get there. You don't have the mental fortitude to take that next step. That's... I wonder a, why. Because to me, it's a no-brainer. It's like, that's is helping? Point. Maybe they're less afraid. <laughs> well, maybe. You've always I think said maybe my fear has driven fear. me. Oh, well, maybe. My fear drives... Because I think if I sit here, I'm more afraid to sit than I am to go do all the hard stuff. The hard stuff's just hard. Sitting is like... This could end up with me losing entirely. Right. Okay. Um, let's move on to episode two, Hope. So you say let's get comfortable living in the gray area and you don't where you don't need to understand everything. Mm -hmm. And then later you say it's not our job to know everything. You have a very analytical mind. How's that going? 
Are you still practicing that? Are you better at it? Do you not feel like that anymore? Um, I think if I'm the best explanation that, <clears throat> sorry, no, the first thing that's coming to mind is I think that's a very, very gradual process. Like very, because if I'm that far on one side of the spectrum of analytical versus acceptance, faith, of everything, right? It's um, it's a long journey to the other side, or even in the middle. Uh, but I would say it's going really well because I'm getting, I'm having comfort. Like it's almost like it snuck its way in there. I haven't thought about that, but like I pray every day. And I really acknowledge that it seems like it's working. It seems like I'm praying for things and they're happening. And yeah, I think it's like um, what it's a fake it till you make it thing. It's like what uh, mm -hmm. Robert Kennedy Jr. said that he read in the Synchronicity book, Carl Jung's book. Yeah. He said, if you don't believe, what is the solution? And he said, fake it till you make it. That's how you have faith. That's how you develop a spiritual belief. Yeah, which you've totally done. And it feels like it's I'm it feels like I'm just barely starting to see it work. So I can't even say like, yes, oh my god, it's totally like a new <laughs> thing. I think I'm just now crossing the threshold of Yes. I haven't even reflected on it. This is the first time I've thought about it. Um yeah, that's in here. I was going to ask you about that. Have you written in your synchronicity journal anything? Yeah. You have? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. We'll go back there. There's been some small things recently that I am kind of, I, that I was like, eh, is that worth putting in there? <laughs> like. <laughs> that reminds me of Cheers. Do you remember? No. Did you ever watch Cheers? Yeah, but not much. Diane had a notebook. Mm -hmm. And Sam was always, try she would write things down that people said that were witty or, you know, were, mm -hmm. you know, writing down was for he her. Always and trying to get in Sam notebook? would always yeah. <laughs> try and say things That's and funny. would never make it in her book. I started watching that a few months ago. I watched okay. a few episodes. Um, well, like, I think write them. Well, they didn't feel, I can't. Because when you go back and you read all that stuff. The mm -hmm. compilation of it makes it more um, meaningful. Okay, here's one. Let me just give you an example. Okay. Yes, I think that's a good point. I was on the phone with Jordan, mm -hmm. and I was telling her about how, did I tell you? I had a night where, I don't know why, but Santeria, the Sublime song, mm -hmm. was in my head. Mm -hmm. And I haven't listened to Sublime in years. And I went back and just did like a dive on Sublime and got really sad. But like in an okay, like I, like it felt good. Mm -hmm. Like I just missed Brad Knoll because mm -hmm. he was such a part of my teenhood. Mm -hmm. Like he was, I spent hours just getting high and watching my bootleg Sublime <laughs> DVDs and listening to music. And uh, I was just telling her about how I felt so emotional. I went like on this roller coaster of just admiring him and then missing him. Feeling like I knew him and he was mm -hmm. gone, even though he was gone before I even knew who he was. And then as I was telling her, I looked over in the car, like right next to me, in front of me, had a Sublime sticker on the back of the car as I was talking to her about it. Wow. And yeah, but I was I like, mean, but Sublime is ubiquitous. I mean, that shit is everywhere. But. Okay. I mean, it really is, though, especially in Southern California. It's fucking... It. But but if I don't... Okay, that's the thing. That's my analytical mind trying to classify, like, which ones are... That's where which it gets Which is why hairy. you put them all in there. Right. And then, you know, if one stands out and you go, ah, oh, I was reaching. But I don't think that happens. Plus, it's kind of like dream journals. It's kind of like maybe connect the dots later. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You don't understand in the moment, but... Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll put them in there. Okay. Um, I'm not good at committing over, uh, to things like that over a long period of time. I start to like go like, mm, and then I lose interest. I lose my momentum. It's because I'm an addict. I'm very emotional. <laughs> it has to make me feel high. Otherwise, I don't do it. Oh, yeah. The, when the novelty wears off. Exactly. Yeah. 
That's, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm saying. Uh, you also say everything is as good as it is bad. That's a philosophy of yours that you're trying to use through this to heal. Yeah, I would almost uh, say just, more accurately it can be as good as it is bad. Do you have any examples of that? Of using that during this time? I mean, we'll see. That remains to be seen. The most obvious ones are dramatic things like me going through a severe depression for a whole year. And let's see what comes of that. You know, in hindsight, my previous episodes have put me on a path of things. I don't know if I feel like because I keep it keeps happening. Mm hmm. I feel like I haven't answered those calls. Right. That's so what I can't say. say that they're. So until I decide to make those things mean something, mm-hmm. I can't say that they do yet. That's a good one. Do you write down the things that you haven't addressed that continue to show up during these times? Because they say those things will continue to show up until you deal with them. Things you haven't dealt with. Um, yeah, I think it's all, I'm taking a deep look at myself right now. Mm -hmm. It may, it's hard to speak completely candidly because there's some like grandiose notions about myself. Oh. that I would have to say in order to explain what I think maybe some of this could mean. And you don't want to because it seems... Doesn't seem humble. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I mean, I'm always talking about humility and that's a quality that I really, really admire in people. Mm-hmm. And I think you've always been very humble. Um, but... There's merit in being able also to say the things. Okay. I thought of a way that's not as egotistical. (laughs) Okay. I think that I can't say that I'm extremely intelligent or like super smart because if I was so fucking smart, maybe I would have figured it out by now. All of this stuff. But I would say that maybe I have extraordinary potential that I have left untapped for a long time because of I've gotten in my own way. I would agree with that. And it seems like it's almost like this is hard because if I choose to believe this, it's a pretty strong statement. If you have that potential, the universe or God wants you to use it in its highest form. And the greater your potential, the more you suffer if you don't. The greater your responsibility. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with great, what is it? With great power comes great responsibility. Yeah. Is that really from (laughs) Spider-Man? I have no idea. I didn't even know that that was said in (laughs) Spider-Man. There's no way that's from Spider-Man. I, that's just, I think, what made it <clears throat> a really popular Maybe. quote because it was in Spider-Man. Um, um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I was just thinking about that because like, I keep orienting my life around these hedonistic pleasures. And I think about my brain and what it might be capable of if I had the discipline. We've it. been talking about that for years. And I think about the things that I could actually do to impact the world. Aside from just make music that people enjoy. And I'm not doing that. And that seems like. Because you're giving in to the other side. Yeah, I'm just setting side. my sights lower. I'm just like, I can use my abilities to achieve these this hedonistic lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Granted, it's not not hurting anyone. It's not like crazy, but I'm ignoring what I know I'm capable of somewhere inside me, deep down. I mean, I've talked a big game. Just now? 
No, in general, oh. in my life, about oh. what I think I could do or right. how smart I am. Well, that's the center of your um, not feeling grounded or um, ill at ease. I think that push pull and not and giving in to the things that are not what should we call them they're not um what's the word the things that you want to do that you think you're capable of that are mm -hmm. good that would help humanity those are what kind of qualities those are virtuistic sure yeah that's not the word i'm looking for but we we use that one yeah, I think that virtuous ignoring those while they're calling you is definitely going to. She doesn't seem that fun. Is the problem? <laughs> I don't. But I think that's. But don't you think that that causes a lot of your feelings of um, the feelings that you're having, the things that cause these mental of disquiet. I don't. Know. <laughs> I just called it dis-ease, yeah. ill at ease, the, you know, you're not settled. Incongruency, there's something, what's the fucking word? I don't know, but anyway, we've explained it enough. I think there's a correlation that... between suffering and fulfillment or joy and your discipline and potential. Okay, here's the thing. Don't you, balance. Don't you wonder... If you were just to do those things, if you were just to go, okay, screw it, I'm just gonna behave as my insides are telling me to. How I might to. feel? <laughs> yeah. Do you think you'd be like, holy cow, I'm just happy? I don't even think about those other things. I mean, do you wonder if that is possible? I think it's very possible. I, but like, what the hell am I supposed to do? I don't know. I just don't wanna do that shit. Like, I don't. <laughs> I don't want well, to do it. Whatever I'm trying it is, to do it in a way that makes me happy. I don't know if I would be happy if I, I don't want to go to school. No, you don't have to go to school. Well, I don't know what the hell I'm supposed to do. Well, is that the problem is that you don't know how to get there? Yeah, I don't know which way. I mean, I think first it's like I can't help. I'm helping in the best way I can. I can't. I've, I have to help myself. I have problems. <laughs> I have fucking problems. Right. That's what we're talking about. And I, so I'm not even there yet. I'm trying to work on being disciplined enough to have my own healthy life. Are you still doing things that you don't think you should be doing that are maybe causing you unhappiness or discontent? I've gotten rid of a lot of, a, a lot of them. Almost all of them, actually. Huh. That's admirable. Okay. Um, I want to go over that Rick Rubin story that mm -hmm. you were talking about. My freaking neck hurts. I'm fine. Okay. You know, I want to run over there and make it better. Yeah. Okay. Um, That's why I said I'm fine. Let so, it go. He, so he went through deep depression for two years and he was thinking of checking out. Yeah. Because he couldn't take it anymore. Mm-hmm. And then he had a mystical experience. Mm -hmm. You say several times in your episodes that you need evidence that everything is going to be okay. Do you remember listening to that episode of yeah. his? Yep. Did it hit you that way? Was that evidence to you? Yeah. I think I listened to it before I was going through it, before my episode. Oh, really? I remember you calling me, telling me about it, and I listened to it, but I, I don't remember. Well, I mean, I probably brought it up to you again, but I went back to it. It was like, you know, it was like my port in the storm. Right. It was my lighthouse. Yeah. I would go back and listen to it. Remind whenever I was getting lost in my doubt. Yeah. I just listened to that. Um, just that part of him explaining the mystical experience he had. On the Lex Friedman podcast? No, because it wasn't on there. I don't think. Oh, it was. That mystical experience he had? He, I, he It was in the Rich Roll podcast. 
you listened to the Lex Friedman one, and I listened to the Rich Roll one, and then we swapped. And oh yeah, I think the Rich that's Roll right. He elaborated more, more yeah. on the Rich Roll one. Mm-hmm. Yes, right. Yeah. Anyway, and then he ended up seeing the. Oh, I didn't write that down. I forgot about that. He ended up seeing the psychic slash Mm -hmm. uh, psychiatrist Mm -hmm. who I found online. I had heard his story. He talked about a psychic slash psychopharmacologist that got him to finally take medication. And then later I went searching for, I wasn't even searching for anyone. I was Googling can coffee cause depression, which is funny because I decided no. And then even her website said it can help, which it, I'm sure for some people it can, but I found her and then found another spiritual psychologist through her who I ended up not loving. He was cool. I liked him, but he wasn't for me. And, uh, and then later I listened to the rich roll podcast and realized that lady that I found that I tried to see oh, was her was the lady who he found, which is crazy. You just reminded me on my computer today when I was listening to all of your podcasts, mm-hmm. there, I, there was a little you know how they put the clips on the sides of what you should listen to next? Yep. There was one that said, you've been lied to about coffee. It's like an hour and a half long. It was only it was released three days ago. I don't know who it is. But we did check that out. There's a billion on there. Oh, this is a brand new one. Demonize coffee. Oh. People I, like of my demographic, like young people going, coffee's awful. I quit. It changed oh, my really? life. I watched a bunch of them. Oh, of course you have. But, I, but they were all talking about like, oh, I was exhausted all the time and I was jittery. And then I quit it, and I had no idea, and then I felt normal after three months or six months even. And so I was like, yeah, okay, I get it. I believe them. And those people it didn't work for anymore. It always worked for you, though. Yeah, it kept working. That's the weird thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So would you ever go back and watch any of your... That's how sensitive I think I am, though. Podcasts for evidence in the future? No. <laughs> because that's what you're doing. You're creating evidence. Everything I watched was like mm. somebody else watching these, that's going to be what they need. Mm-hmm. That's the whole point. Right. But it's, it might be hard to watch yourself. Yeah. But if you ever need it, I mean, there's so many things in your podcast that are evidence. All right. Well, that's a good, actually, that's a good perspective to make them from. You know, I actually, it occurred to me during this break that I should stop making episodes to educate people and I should start making episodes just to document my experience. Yeah. That's the education in and of itself. That's what you needed. I know, but I kept trying to think of like, what's a topic I could talk about? It's like, I know. I think I should just make an episode every week, even if it's not. Because like, it's so easy to go, oh yeah, I want people to watch this and then get. Even though I, I am not doing it for that at all. I don't give a shit about success, mm-hmm. business, monetary success for this podcast. This is just information, mm-hmm. accessible information for free for people who are going through it mm-hmm. and myself. So I, I maybe I'm right. created in that. I know, <laughs> but like it's, I don't know. Well, I think I'm just figuring it out. I, I need to make them. It would probably be easier to watch if I made them from a different well, you don't have to watch them. You can listen to them. I don't want to do that either. It's not watching. It's both of it. Okay. Both uh, of it. Also at the end of episode two, Lord, we're only on episode two. Um, you say acknowledge the wins. What's been a win lately? Uh, I mean, the coffee was a huge win. It's just everything's been better <laughs> since that. It's a good one. Um... Let's see. Yeah, I, think I mean, I played about the small shows. Things, you know, I played three shows, and it was like hectic, and it was traveling, and lack of sleep, and it was a very huge net positive. And there was a moment where I was like, before the mm-hmm. LA show, where I needed food, and I was just like, I'm mm-hmm. not like this feels intense right now. There was a moment I, I walked before over the a homeless Francisco guy who was passed out also. on the ground with his cart falling over and his shit everywhere, and I was like. <sighs> In San Francisco, there's a moment? Yeah. I don't you, remember. What do you mean? You were 
freaking out a little bit because rehearsal didn't go well and you hadn't eaten. And oh, I wasn't freaking feeling, out. No, no. You were just feeling negative. Sound check was really stressful. That. Did I say rehearsal? Yeah. Never. Everything was, there was a bunch of problems during sound check. Yeah, but I gave it up. I was like, whatever happens, happens. There you I've go. I've done everything I can. That. See? Yeah. Okay. That's a win. Yep. <laughs> um, I had three days in a row where I slept like 10 hours a few days ago. That's a win. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm still doing things even though I'm exhausted without coffee. That's a big still win. Still getting shit done. Mm-hmm. Save that. We're going to talk about that. That's episode 11. That's a big one. Okay. I mean, there's probably a ton of little wins. Well, I mean, there's a recent thing that happened a couple of days ago that might have sunk my battleship before, and I feel right about it and okay. Oh, and a big win is how I am able to be friends with my ex-girlfriend. Something changed. Something that is unusual for me, for how I feel about exes, completely changed. And I'm able to have a healthy friendship wow. with my ex. That's good. That's huge. I don't know where that came from. It just happened. So there's a bunch of that shit. All the prayers, all the praying, all the talking to God and the universe and asking for things. <laughs> seems like it's working. <laughs> yeah, that was... Uh... I think it was on episode two that I underlined that a million times, how you talk about training your brain. Train, faking it till you make it, all Mm -hmm. that stuff. It's so true. People could take one thing away from your podcast. That's it. Literally. You just have to pretend. You just have to keep doing it until Mm -hmm. it works. It works. It just works. Yeah. When I'm in a a good state of mind. Mm Mm-hmm. I believe that there's like no limit to that. There's no ceiling on what you can. <laughs> That's the problem. You when you're in a good state of mind. Do, you can teach yourself to believe anything. But you started doing it because you were not in a good state of mind. Right. And again, I don't want to be cynical about it. <laughs> it's, not, it's not even being cynical. I'm just unsure what the biggest component here of me getting my brain to a good place is. Seems like it's just like a soup right now. It is a soup. Of good things. For sure. Of course. There's no alcohol. So many things you've Quitting done. the coffee. Yes. Medication. Meditation. Meditation. I saw, oh, I haven't been meditating. I've been counting my prayers of meditation. I, I just can't. I can't fucking sit there for 30 minutes. I, that's it. I have to update them. I did it for like 30 days. That's or, in here. Or something. But I feel no benefit. And it's so hard to sit there and then I just like, it doesn't do anything for me. It's crazy. And they say it does, but it's so hard to keep doing something that's just like, I don't even feel inside that I need to keep doing it because I do my prayer every day Mm -hmm. and that probably takes like 10 minutes or more. Mm -hmm. And that feels more like it's doing something. Yeah. The meditation. Maybe you're meditating incorrectly. This is maybe down here. Like in episode eight or nine or something. Okay. We have to talk about meditation. All right. Because <laughs> you go deep into that. Yep. Um, I believe in it. I just, there's some information missing between me and meditation. Either I'm doing it wrong or I'm doing the wrong kind for me or I'm not ready for it or it's not for me. I think At it's least sitting. for everyone. And I think that there are definitely different methods. And I know we've talked about TM. And your meditation, when you describe it to me, and when you talked about it on whatever episode that was, sounds exhausting. And But sometimes not. Sometimes you said that, like, you open your eyes and it's been 20 minutes or whatever and you didn't even notice. Um, but part of it is that you're, it's supposed to be rest for your brain. I don't know that you're getting that. Um, Andrew Huberman said that he does meditation but he never has been able to get to a quiet place in his brain, wordlessness. Mm-hmm. But he said he's gotten there with physical things like running or mm. doing like a speed bag mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. boxing. Mm-hmm. And he's had like profound, like subconscious has been working on some kind of realization. It just comes fully formed with no 
prior thought, just in the wordlessness, the silence. And I was thinking about that. And the only time I can achieve that is when I'm, I'm running, doing something physical. But he still meditates, right? Yeah, he still tries. I don't know how serious he is about it or how his regimen is, but he tries. Well, I mean, I, I'm i not the one to be speaking on but this. I, I no, I, but I've literally thought maybe running is the only kind of meditation I can do right now, or maybe mm-hmm. that's just the one for me. Maybe, maybe I need to do stuff like that. Well, they say that all the meditation you're doing helps and you just don't know it. Doing dishes. is meditation. And cooking. Sure actually have way more of an effect immediate that on you can me feel. than sitting down and meditating. Yeah. Yeah, but sure. how do you know that's not working? I mean, again, like you said, this whole uh, recovery process has been a soup, and maybe that's Well, it's just it. like exercising. Mm-hmm. There's an immediate benefit. <laughs> it's not just pain so, and then, right, right, right. you know, like there's some kind of signal of like, oh, there is a reward. Mm-hmm. And it's not like the reward is uh what's the word it's not like the reward is in proportion to the effort Mm -hmm. i think you suffer more working out than the high you get after it oh really yeah i think you get long-term benefits well right you know so i'm not saying that all the reward okay but i'm saying that's like in that's like in um endogenous you know, like a system that's in place of like, you get this little like, yeah, this is your reward. You feel good for working out. It's like telling you this is healthy. Right. Meditation, so, like I'd after find- I'm like, I feel exactly the fucking same or <laughs> sleepier. So it's like, why am I doing this? Um, it's frustrating. And, but it's even more frustrating because I believe in it. Well, so the book that I listened to, which you have there, um, talks about there's examples of people who are saying exactly what you're saying. This and guy said he said that he said, in the book. He says like for years, he said he did meditation for years and pretended like he was getting benefits, but felt nothing. Well, that's before he did the TM. I, I did his... the TM. Well, I know. So I know. I did the TM did for a really month. Very disciplined. 20 minutes twice a day oh, for like several months straight. With your little nothing. noise. Your felt little... nothing. <laughs> yeah. My mantra. Your mantra. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I don't know. Hmm. I'm not writing it off. Well, I just... also, okay, so, but this is, he's giving examples of people that have been doing TM for years and saying, I, it's not helping me. And he says to one of the practitioners, um, sometimes before you see it, people in your life will see it. And so this person comes back and says, sure enough. My husband and I were at dinner and we were having an argument over something that I apparently just let go. And he said, what the heck is happening? Three months ago, you would have, you know, walked out of the restaurant. And she said, so I don't know what else to attribute it to. I think I have more self-awareness than that. Right. Yeah. Well, anyway, that's just one little thing. (laughs) Example from the book. But. I'm just saying if there's a benefit, it. It'd be difficult I mean, to sneak it by it, me. I know. Okay. Well, if you've been doing some it for a very long time. But again, I think maybe it's part of all of your healing, but maybe not. Anyway, who's your favorite superhero? <laughs> Batman. Really? Yeah, of course. <laughs> Why? I mean, I don't know. I uh, Because in episode three, you talk about superheroes. What about them? Uh, you talk about their trajectory how they became superheroes and it was all through adversity. Most of them was from their parents dying. Well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> the three that you give examples to, which is Batman, Spider-Man and Superman. Superman's parents didn't necessarily, I mean, his well, parents okay, did he, die, right? but he didn't know he that until way later. Them, right. And Spider-Man's uncle died. Um, also in episode three, oh, this is where you talk about. Well, I also talk about, sorry, the superhero thing. Yeah. Something that I've held on to is that a lot of their stories, they think they're crazy or they think they're going crazy or they're doing, or life is real bad and tough right before they realize they they accept that they're, they accept that they're a superhero. (laughs) Do you think you're turning into a superhero? If you were a superhero, what would be your superhero name or power? (laughs) 
I can't answer that. I wouldn't. I wouldn't have one. A name. And my power. Your superpower. Mm-hmm. I don't know what my superpower is. There's something, but I don't know. What would you say it is? I don't well, even know how to classify my intelligence. Well, I mean, what would I mean? We're going into the fantasy world. What would your superpower be if you could have a superpower? Oh, you're just asking? Yeah. Oh. Oh, that's really hard, though. There's so many. <laughs> I know. Uh, the Flash is really cool. It's that is cool. Just like go so fast. Who's the guy that can so fast. disappear? Like disappear? Cloak themselves. They're invisible all of a sudden. You know, I don't know if there is an invisible superhero. Really? Yeah, now that I think about it, like their only power is being invisible. I would there's, think that you would like there's that. There's superheroes that have that, but I don't know if there's any that like mm-hmm. their identity is based on that superpower that I can think of. Okay. Um, you talk about doing your brutal self inventory. Yeah, I haven't done that yet. Okay, you haven't done that. That's yet. scary That's, because it's a twelve step. Concept. There's like a PG version that I might have to do just to not like hurt people's feelings in my life. Like it's being that honest. Oh, you mean out loud, like in a podcast? Yeah. Have you written them down even though? Mm, no. Okay. No, but I plan to do that. I guess I don't need to share it. No. All. It's for you. I mean, like I said, it's a 12-step concept and right. they share, but you don't have to. And But they don't share it's it with for the fucking yourself. world. No. They don't that's give the true. world access to it. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> true. Okay. That was a short episode for me. Episode four, protocols and synchronicity. I think this was my favorite episode. Um, protocols. Let's see. You wrote a protocol during, oh, you wrote a. You wrote me during a particularly stressful event in my life. Mm-hmm. You wrote some protocols for me. And it helped just knowing that I had a plan to reference if mm-hmm. I start freaking out, which I did. And it saved me, honestly. So what is your what are your protocols when you start to feel anxious? Like no you don't have to give detail, like just one through five, because let's just give your listeners just like a one through five. What my protocol is title and no detail. I don't even know if there's five steps. Two or three then. Um, I mean, do you go through a protocol? No. You don't. No, I don't. Not a conscious one. Well, it's not like a, it's not written down. I just have the first few things that I do in certain situations. Mm -hmm. So if I'm just starting to panic. Yeah. Um, I kind of go through my toolbox and go what, what, what's needed right now. I don't have a protocol for each individual thing. I just go, okay, I have all these tools. Which one suits this particular moment the best? So give me three of your tools. So one of them is imagining being on the other side. That I think the strongest one actually mm-hmm. is imagining being on the other side of it and going, whoa, everything turned out okay. Mm-hmm. So that applies to a lot. Mm-hmm. I'll be like after a workout or something. I'll, strangely enough, being in a shower kind of triggers me sometimes. I don't know why. Um, That's interesting. Maybe it's because you're literally the most vulnerable and <laughs> alone, and and there's no you're not distracted. You're just with yourself, and that's literally it. Um, wow. So if I start to have a thought of like, oh, what if I spiral out? You know. Mm-hmm. I, or something does trigger me. I do have a specific thought about something that's like giving me anxiety and yes. I, I'm afraid it's going to turn into an episode. Mm-hmm. I just imagine being relieved that it passed and it didn't turn into anything. I literally go through it going like, oh, in my head. I see myself doing it, going through the motions of being like, oh, everything's fine. Everything was fine. What was I even freaking out about? And I do the same thing when I wake up in the middle of the night anxious and I'm like, mm. fuck, what if I can't go back to sleep? I immediately imagine 
-hmm. waking up going, oh, I feel so rested. Like, damn, I fell back asleep. That's great. That one has been super powerful. I mean, that's like number one. Um, Another one is breathing. Mm -hmm. I do the four in, eight out. And there's whatever combination is fine. Right. But the out has to be longer than the in because that yeah. calms your heart rate. Yeah. And the opposite is. Raises your heart rate. Yeah. Right. So I do. Yeah. Uh, short in, long out. Mm-hmm. Um, so those are two. And then another one. Actually, I've never prayed. I don't think I've ever prayed during it. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, I think what scares me about it is That's like I don't like it's scary to directly confront the fact that you're going through something and ask for help because like what if it doesn't come then then the prayer is just useless then I don't believe in prayer anymore I'm afraid of that experience. Oh yeah, I, get I don't that. want to like wager something so black and white. You can't do that. That's what the word faith means. <laughs> um, yeah. It happened to me yesterday on the airplane. Mm-hmm. I was flying right. and it. This wasn't feeling great, and I was going to order some alcohol. Uh-huh. And, and he instead, didn't. Instead, I slapped myself in the brain and said, why don't you just say a prayer first? So I did. And I didn't ask for the plane to be calm. I just asked for whatever was wanting, whatever part of me was needing the alcohol to calm down. Mm-hmm. And it did. It just went away. But if it hadn't, I don't think I would have sworn off prayer or thought, oh, my God. Um, I don't think I would either, but I'm afraid. Yeah, I mean, it, hap- it didn't happen, though. I mean, I, I, don't got, my, be possible. I got my little gift, so mm-hmm. I didn't have to go through that. Um, speaking of synchronicities, you mentioned good parking as an example of how positive thinking leads to manifestation, and you called it a floofy example. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but... I just want to attest to the fact that you have really good parking karma. It happened to us yesterday. Yeah. And you didn't even ask for it. I think I generally do. Yeah. It seems like recently I've had even better parking karma than usual. I'm just saying it was. I mean, well, I'm just saying it's like a. That's a small thing, but it's a thing. That one's easy to combat with logic. You know? Sure. That's why I called it. It was like a. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It was like a, what's it called? A, uh, a, it didn't have a ton of substance, mm-hmm. whatever, but it's a, it's a well, good small I'm example. Just, I'm, I'm quoting the floofy word. Right. <laughs> um, and I wrote you pray now. Any more examples of that working? Am I praying now? Is no, I said you do. You do pray now. Oh, yeah. We talked about that in that episode. Yeah. Yeah, like if you're not um, praying when you're asking for help in a moment, when are you praying? Every day, every morning, I have a ritual. Mm. I go out and I sit in the sun and then I come back in and pray. And I do three prayers. I do one that I is a rehearsed one mm-hmm. that I wrote for myself. Mm-hmm. I do one where I have an open dialogue. Mm-hmm. I can say whatever. Well, actually, it's been a monologue. I haven't opened it up <laughs> to receive anything yet. <laughs> where I ask for things for other people and for myself, mm-hmm. and then I end it with another, like, affirmations. Like mm-hmm. Ten affirmations in a row. So that's when I pray. Okay. But you feel like that's going well. Yeah. As a practice. Yep. Yeah, definitely worth it. Cost you nothing. Um, I'm going to open my book really quickly because I have a feeling that I'm skipping something important for some reason. Oh. Um, I th- this is my favorite subject, the synchronicity thing, mm-hmm. as you know. Yep. I have a book. I love it too. Filled with them that I have forgotten about. Oh, and I didn't when know that. I go back Yes. I mean I don't call mine synchronicities, mine mm-hmm. are prayers, I guess. And and the manifestation of those mm, prayers. Answered prayers. Yes. So mine just a book. Um <laughs> But going back and reading it is so 
it's such evidence that it's real because I still go through, is this real? Is this all in my head? Um, and then I go back in the book and I, which is funny read stuff. because a lot of people would say there's no difference. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's possible. What's real and what's in your head. Sure. Yeah. But I think t- the practice of it accesses a part of, if it is in your head, accesses a part of your brain that you're not, um, exercising if you're not yeah. doing these things. Yeah. They say there are, if I remember correctly, there are networks that they found that correspond to spirituality. Like already in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, understand. I don't know if that's true. I think it is. Um, so can we tell my favorite story of synchronicity? <laughs> I don't know what you're referring to, but yeah. Yes, you do. Your favorite one? Well, a, an impactful one. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I yes. mean, I think we it's should tell good that story. story. Mm-hmm. Tell it. Okay. So I have a had a extreme fear of flying. Extreme. That just I didn't tell seemingly this. developed. No, mm. you've not told this. Interesting. Out of nowhere because you were a big part of it. Um, anyway, I hadn't flown for five or six years. Really? And that just, long? yeah. And just uh, every time I would land after a flight, would swear to God it was my last flight. I was never going to put myself through that again because it was so traumatizing. I really felt like I was dying the whole time I was on the flight. It's awful experience. Mm-hmm. So um, I had to fly to Germany this year, and I had about a year's notice that I was going to have to take this 12-hour flight to and from. And so I had time to prepare. And um, I did a lot of research. Um, and one of the things that happened, and this whole thing was synchronicity before I made this phone call to a woman who told me a story about something that she overcame a debilitating anxiety disorder that she'd had for 30 years, I think, Mm -hmm. um, literally just by praying. She was in a program with me that really focuses on yourself and, Um, she said that she, for the first time, realized that she'd never, ever, ever taken time in her life to focus on herself. And she was doing this and she started praying and her anxiety disorder just disappeared. She was bad, right? She She was bad. Agoraphobia. Yes. Yep. Anyway, she told me that whole story and I thought, well, what the heck? If she can do that, I can fly. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, God is there for everyone. So I'm going to tap into this anyway. So I really just decided that I could do it with that, but I also sought out a a therapist. Um, so let's flash forward. You came to visit me and you drove to visit me and I drove home with you. Oh, my therapist said I had to take a test flight before I could go to Germany, a short test flight to see where I was mentally Mm -hmm. (laughs) because he was going to advise against me flying to Germany if things were as bad as they were before. So you and I drove home together from Northern California to Southern California and my flight was going to be from your house back to my Mm -hmm. house. And on the way, we were listening to some podcasts and we listened to... Forgot about this part. You did? Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord. (laughs) We were listening to um, Smartless. Smartless and Keanu Reeves was the guest mm-hmm. and we were talking about just what a beautiful human being he is and how Best. Um, as big of a mega superstar he is, it's never gone to his head. He's not changed. He's still giving and down to earth and could give a rat's ass about um, all of the money, all of the fame, any of it. Anyway, we talked a lot about that. Um, 
So we came home. I think I stayed. I think I brought everything that I could fit into your car, subconsciously planning that that would keep me from having to fly home because I couldn't take all my stuff back with me. That's true. Mm -hmm. I thought my husband's going to have to come get me. Mm. Anyway, that wasn't pining out the way I had hoped. So panning out. Panning out. Thank you. I was pining for it to happen. Mm. It wasn't panning out. Um, so I think it was the day before I had to fly, I finally made my reservation. Um, yeah. So I was flying out of Burbank to home. And the night before was fraught with anxiety. I was a little nervous in the morning. I just wanted to get it going. I just wanted to get on the flight and I just wanted to go. I just wanted to take it. I just wanted to do it. And that's when you wrote me my protocol. Uh, I needed something so that I wouldn't spin. Because once you start the spin, it's very hard to get out of it. So you wrote me the protocol. And the night before, I said my prayers. Be with me. Get me through this. And I had thoughts of it would be nice if there could be an accompaniment on the plane <laughs> that would make me feel like everything was going to be okay. Because um, in the past... How did you actually think it? What were the... Well, I'll tell you. What, I, how did what, I think it? What was the it? language that you the were The language thinking? was it would be really nice if there could be a celebrity on my plane that would okay. make me feel better. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because it happened once before when I was flying from my home to LA. Jerry Rice was on my flight. Mm -hmm. Um... And I immediately felt better. Not that celebrities don't go down in flames, but <laughs> I just thought, what's the likelihood that the headline tomorrow is going to be Jerry Rice, you know, died in a plane crash. Mm -hmm. And I think it was very likely. So I felt good. So getting ready for this flight, I thought that'd just be nice, but whatever. So we drove to the airport. You dropped me off at Burbank. Goodbye. Have a nice flight. I got in there. I was a crazy maniac. My therapist told me I had to go up to the counter and tell them that I had this anxiety so that they would give me a medical pre-board. Mm -hmm. He told me to tell the flight crew, all these things that I'm not comfortable with. Like, I got to let everybody know about my shit. Mm -hmm. And normally I just keep it in. Almost makes it worse. Which it for sure makes it worse. He was like, you got to let that stuff out. So I start crying. <laughs> I know. To the ticket person. The moment I tell him I have a fear of flying, mm -hmm. she sent me over to another person. She said, I can't help you. You have to go see him. So I opened my mouth, started crying again. Mm -hmm. He was like, oh, it's going to be okay. Everything's going to be fine. Do you need a medical pre-board? And I said, yes, and gave me a medical pre-board. And then I went to the bathroom to wipe my face. And I just feel like a child the moment I open my mouth and say I have this anxiety. And so I cry. It's weird. So I came out of the bathroom and I was walking back to the gate and there was a little crowd had developed. And as I got closer, I looked up to see Keanu Reeves looking back at me. <laughs> and my immediate thought was, he is here for me. This is for me. <laughs> he's, he's, this is for me. There was zero doubt in my mind. I mean... He was standing at my gate. It was the last gate in the airport. So I knew he was... Well, I thought he was coming off the flight, actually. Mm -hmm. So that was a miracle to me anyway. I'm going to go hug Keanu Reeves and tell him, oh my God, you're here for me. Mm -hmm. But it turns out he was on my flight. Um, and I walked up to him and started babbling. And then some other man grabbed my arm and said, ma'am there are people waiting to take pictures with him. And I was like, oh my God, there's other people here? So I backed off. I watched all this stuff happen. And then I went up to him and I explained that I'm not a, you know, it's not that I'm not a fan, but I don't ask for autographs and I don't take pictures with people. But I explained to him my fear of flying and that you and I had listened to a podcast and that we were talking about him. And 
that you were at home worried about me and I knew if I could send you a picture of Keanu Reeves and I mm-hmm. <laughs> that she would feel like everything was going to be okay. Mm-hmm. So, and as I'm telling him this, I start crying again. So embarrassing. <laughs> anyway, so he took a picture with me. He was very gracious and I sent it to you and you, <laughs> your response back was, um, shut your goddamn mouth. Mm-hmm. Everything is going to be more than okay. And anyway, they got on the plane. He was with his band. Um, they got on the plane. And then well, I got on the plane. You didn't even know he was on your flight at this point. No, before. I didn't know he was on my flight. Yeah. We were t- actually, he and I were talking and I was telling him about the whole Jerry Rice story when mm-hmm. we were interrupted. And they said, we have to get you on the plane, sir, because there's a crowd. And mm. so he got on the plane with his band, which I didn't even realize it was his band with him, which would have even been more exciting for me at the time. And then I was the next person to board the plane because I had a medical pre-board. So it was them. And then I get on and they're in the front row. I mean, I don't need to go into all the details of this. I just, it's it's funny. But I- It's funny that you asked to sit between them not knowing they were sitting together. I did. I I did. I got on the plane and I asked if I could sit in between he and his, um, his, he's the lead guitarist, actually, Brett. Yeah. And he, of course, said, of course you can. And then looked at his seatmate, and then I realized, oh my God, they're together, and I'm asking you to sit in between them. How embarrassing. Mm. So I said, please, no, thank you. I'm going to go sit over here. And I sat in the front row. The entire plane was empty, by the way. I could have taken any seat. Really? Yeah, I was I the first one on after them. That. Well, it's all just us at this point. They haven't oh, even you're boarded right anyone. Then. Oh, gotcha, 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 gotcha. Yeah, I could have sat anywhere. I thought you meant the flight was empty. Any row. But mm-hmm. no, I've got to, I'm going to sit right here with you guys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I sat next to. The rest of his band, which I didn't know, Rob, his drummer, and his girlfriend or wife, I'm not sure. Um, and it was a magical flight. It was magical. I cried my eyes out in front of everyone because I was experiencing just this gift that was so black and white. There was no way I could discount that this was my synchronicity. This was my prayer being answered mm-hmm. in a big way. So yeah, it was a wonderful flight and I haven't overcome my fear of flying, but I made it to Germany and back four flights and um, yeah, everything's been well, better. That's but a huge. That's, I mean, go ahead. I mean, for you to be go miraculously ahead, just cured would be. Go ahead, doubters, and tell me that that was just a coincidence that Keanu Reeves was on my flight. And by they the will. way, if you could have asked me in that second that I said it would be nice if there's a... Um, famous person on my flight, if you could have asked me who I would have picked, it would have been him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just because of his vibe. This is going to be fantastic clickbait (laughs) for you too. And he said the coolest thing too, by the way. I didn't post that picture. I never posted it. It was for me. I have the photo on my phone if anybody wants to see it. Um, But he said to me, you have to think of the plane like a surfboard on the ocean. Because that's how it reacts. I mean, what a Keanu Reeves thing to say, right? Yeah, the most Keanu Reeves thing. <laughs> anyway. For all of us, at least. Okay, that's my story. Um, yeah, I'm going to edit this into clips like sure. I do. Yeah, yeah. And the title of this is going to be Keanu Reeves saved my mom's life on a plane. <laughs> and then in parentheses, clickbait. But it's true. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. And then I'll in the... Uh, thumbnail. I'll put the photo of you guys. I mean, it couldn't have been anyone else. No one else flies. They don't even have a first class on Southwest in Burbank. So yeah, what well, a cool what, guy. Yeah, they what were amazing. Cool they were guy. totally amazing for just putting up with me. Dog Star. We should definitely shop them out. <sighs> yeah, which and Thank I have you, tickets. To, I have tickets to their show Tuesday that I'm missing because I'm here. Where is their show? It's in Sacramento. Why the hell are you? Because I did you stay this long? Because Southwest, if you recall, Southwest had a deal and I just bought tickets for a certain date. Okay, we filled up the uh, memory card on the camera and it stopped. I don't remember what the hell we said. We were talking about how you should go to the show. But we'll move on. Okay, moving on to episode six, relationships, relationship, your relationship with sex and money and Mm -hmm. all things. Um, Oh, are you still planning to do TikTok shorts? What do you mean? Well, you talked about how you wanted to, like there's so much information to digest that you wanted to put it into shorts. 
like little that would be YouTube shorts or TikTok clips. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's more digestible content for people. No, I was gonna do shorter clips on YouTube. I think because I already do clips. You wrote TikTok. I mean, I mean, you said TikTok. Oh, I don't know. Okay, anyway. I'm not sure what that question means. Just are you still I planning make, to do that? Because you you make what? I make clips for every episode, and they're on TikTok, and Instagram, and YouTube Shorts. They're everywhere. Well, then yes, the answer. But is I've yes. been doing You're that doing since it. the beginning. Well, this was episode six. I don't know how many months ago that was, but that's what you said. Okay. Well, I must have been talking. That's I'm, why I'm confused. I must have been talking about something else because I've been doing that since this first episode. Right. Okay. Well, we're gonna have to revisit that. I didn't write down the timestamp. Okay. Okay. Um. At 10 minutes, exploring life, conquering your mind. Oh, deleting social media. How did that go? Fantastic, but I'm back on it. You are back on it. That's what I was going to ask. Yeah, but I need to delete it again. It's literally just so entertaining. It's such a drug. And it. I'm connected to so many people. I can talk to anyone I want at any time, like strangers. Mm -hmm. And that's exciting to me. Do you do that? Occasionally. Mm. But... I mean, mostly females, but my gut tells me it's more detrimental. It's detrimental. I mean, it's not, I'm not like seeking out complete. I'm just, it's literally just talking. I mean, like what the hell? Well, I mean, okay. Well, how much time do you spend on it? Maybe that's the thing. Not a ton, but even so it seems like it's fruitless. It's not, it's ultimately not serving me. It's social interaction. Which well, I we don't need social. Of. Really, I don't think we need social interaction constantly. You have a really big group of friends that you do. I am with. alone most days, most of the day. Oh, so you don't go into an office, but so many people don't anymore. I don't live with anyone. That's I true. I don't see my friends every day. It's true. You have a roommate. I'm alone most of the time. You need a pet. I can't have one. Not allowed. My lease. I signed a lease. It says no pets. I'm aware. You had one for a little bit. Okay, anyway. Um, so, so that went well, deleting social media. Um, spending habits, sexual impulses, any work going on with either of those things? Yes, both. And it's going well? Yep. Okay, good. Very good. The money could go better. I mean, I'm doing... Are you doing anything differently, really differently, or are you just conscious of it, more aware of your spending habits? That's a no. I'd say it's a little better. Okay. I've been selling shit and not buying shit, but I have bought some things, just nothing expensive, nothing crazy. Like I bought these mic stands, you know, just now. I bought a guitar. I bought another thing. <laughs> Confessional. <laughs> but I've sold <laughs> thousands of dollars in pedals, so it's a wash, you know? Okay, well, it's a wash only? No, 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 I made money. Okay. All right, okay. Uh, episode seven, your brain healing plan. Um, in part of it, you talk about not letting your mind run away with your thoughts, like... Um, not being a slave to letting your mind do whatever you want, having more control over that. It reminded me of during your second battle that when you were seeking out therapists, one of them over the phone said to you that you have catastrophic thinking. Yeah. And she said whenever you start to I don't think that have, was over on the phone. <clears throat> that was in person. Okay, details. <laughs> well, I know those are important. Whatever, but I you just pointed remember, out a detail. But I just okay. you're the one who who went okay. out of your way to say over the phone. Okay, you could have just said one of them told you. Nope, because you didn't see them. You were interviewing them over the phone, and this one particular one that you no, spoke she told to, me that in person. And the stop sign lady. Yeah, yeah, that was in person. Okay, it's fine. It's just a, a difference in recollection. Re recollection. Yeah, it's fine. I'm not being willy nilly. I know. I'm not okay. saying that you are. Okay. You just went out of your way to point out that it was over the phone. <laughs> so you're correcting me. So I'm okay. correcting you. All right. We have it straight now. 
Anyway, and then she said, when you have this catastrophic thinking that you're supposed to picture a stop sign, and I guess yeah. the idea behind that, thwarting your anxious thoughts before they run away, and then that at fucking some point lady becomes a knee jerk reaction. And so my question is, do you still have catastrophic thinking, and do you do anything like that to stop it, or when you're having an, you know anxiety, do you do do you have any practice like that at all? That stops things right as they come. Yeah, I told you. I imagine. That, yeah, yeah. Imagine. Okay. I imagine myself being past it and okay. it not happening. Okay, well, let's pretend I didn't ask that part. Let's just pretend that I asked the part if you still have catastrophic thinking. Oh, I... You know, going to the worst case scenario of every thought, of every fear. It's... M- it's much more extreme when I'm going through an episode. But. Right. Yeah, I guess I have the impulse, but I don't, it's not quite as extreme. Like, I'm trying to think of. It's not catastrophic. It's just like worrisome thinking. It's like assuming that something, that there's something to worry about. Right. Like if we're going to go to a restaurant. I just start thinking about all the reasons why it could go, it could be stressful. Like, it, like, oh, it's going to be super busy. It's going to be a long way. We're not going to be able to find parking. I start talking myself out of it. Instead of just like. <laughs> right, that's not catastrophic. This is- no, it's not catastrophic. But I do that with everything. So if there's something really serious, I might go like, oh, this could be like really. It's not as bad, but, but it's there. That's not even close to as bad. It's very manageable. Good. That's good. All right. Uh, you also were going to figure out how to have a, develop a healthy relationship to death. You, has there been any, I think I was too raw and I'm coming up on the point. I, I'm now in a more stable place where I can start to think about those things, but I Mm -hmm. want more time having been stable before I launch into that. Yeah. So I I haven't. those are things I would I aspire to do, but mm-hmm. I'm not ready, right, to think about death that deeply. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Understandable. Um, and are you still sticking to your plan to heal your brain? Which I, I don't think even that remember was what the it was. Yeah, it was mostly just the meditation. Get to know your brain. But I am doing things like, yeah. But I do. I do know my brain. You know, obviously I know my brain. So oh my maybe, God, I know my brain. Okay. Were you just, was it? It was build better habits, but I'm also doing things like, I mean, I quit coffee. That's huge. Instead, I go outside and sit in the sun every day and I pray every day. So those things I have adopted and they're part of my lifestyle and those are part of it. Uh, meditation, I'm still playing around with. You mentioned a meditation teacher that that would be a good thing for you. What have you thought about that since? Yeah, and I've decided I can't afford it right now. It's a luxury I can't afford. Right, but you but it is a good idea. I think you're the perfect person to have a meditation teacher. Mhm. Yeah. I would just have to find the right one. I really would of have to course. search. Yeah, you but you have to find the right. That doesn't go without saying the right. Yeah, I yeah. To, yes. Okay. Cuz some people can just like, "Oh, I just need to be taught." Right. And then they learned. I need like the guy or girl right well that's valid because there are many people in positions of power for lack of a better term that influence yes um that aren't smarter than you that have no business teaching anyone other than the most rudimentary pupil right so like the lady with the fucking stop sign. <laughs> that was so irritating. I was like falling I, apart at a molecular level. And she was like, picture a stop sign. I thought that was good. And she didn't ask me any other questions Solid or anything. She's advice. like, that helps. And I was like, sure. She's like, okay, cool. Have a good one. Let me know if you need another. I was like, this is, what is it? We're at fucking kindergarten. It was insane. Okay, then. It's a good example. All right. Anyway. Um, okay, let's talk about friends. How long have you lived in LA now? Eight years. 
Eight years. Okay. And how long, the particular friend group that you have now, how long has that group been a part of your life? All varying amounts. True. There's like okay, not your roommate. The people who not, been, not Grant. Let's exclude him. What about Anthony? Let's exclude Anthony. Not anyone that came with you from the Bay Area. Okay. Not so new friends. Because you have a lot of new friends. Does Dylan that, count? Dylan counts. I met Dylan Jordan on the counts. Road after okay, Dylan, Jordan, Tanny counts. Danny, Micah counts. Micah. I don't want to start naming names. I want to leave people out. It's like Sorry. an acceptance speech. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> Judson, Neil. Okay, let's stop. What your the core group of friends that you hang the people you spend your most time with now? Right. I'm just trying not to leave anyone out so that okay, not, their feelings don't get hurt. Um, I don't even know who would that. It's honestly, it's like. Jordan and Grant and then other mm -hmm. peripheral players. people. <clears throat> yeah, like I don't even hang out with. I guess I see Dylan. It's all mostly basketball or like we watch. Yeah, what's what you I okay, think okay. I need to understand <laughs> what the context is here. I'm getting somewhere. Yeah. Well, you, I think I think I have you a nice were friend group. About, I'm connecting with the new were, ones. So this particular episode you were talking about getting rid of the people in your life that are toxic or are not good for you or that oh, you've yeah. been friends with for a while that not me, are but not other people yes doing that and you were also referencing those people that don't have a lot of friends that it might be difficult to get rid of the friends that they do right. have yeah. um and you talked about how fortunate you are because you have a really great group of friends and Yada, yada. However, when you moved here, you were lonely for a while. Um, you were searching for a group of like-minded people. You were alone a lot because of your career. Mm -hmm. um, and That's a good point. I guess I didn't, didn't have any friends other than Grant and his friends. Yes. And you were, and it was getting to you. Yeah. You started, you took an improv class. You started jujitsu. Um, mm -hmm. the improv <laughs> class, I think was not improv. It was stand up. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Stand up. No, it's fine. Um, and I think that was an attempt to find like-minded people. Yeah, maybe to get out there and expose mm -hmm. yourself because with your career, you were just at home and you had no right. access to friends right like how are you gonna make friends yeah i would say the difference then and now is now mm -hmm. i have friends that i can i feel i can bring like no offense grant <laughs> uh like real life problems to and have a meaningful discussion about yes so most that's of, what i was gonna ask most you. of them are my new friends right yeah. so it took a while actually most of them are very recent right very recent exactly yeah. That's what I was getting to. Yeah. Just because I want people to know that it's not impossible to make friends at any age. That no, it's not the easiest thing for anyone. Mm -hmm. um, How did they meet? And I love you, man. Do you remember that movie, Paul Rudd? Uh, it's always been a I girlfriend do. guy. I do, but I don't. I mean, very. I mean, no. How did you meet Jason Siegel? I don't remember. Oh. Jason Siegel tries to meet women at open houses and Paul Rudd's at real estate. Oh. Oh, whatever. <laughs> My point is, he was in his like 40s. Mm hmm. So. That's what that movie's about. Right. And, and it's true. So I just actually wanted to reiterate that it's not impossible and that you just have to. That's a. I would actually. I'm sorry, finish your sentence. No. Yeah. I keep putting yourself out there. I was going to ask you how it happened. I mean, you went and played basketball. I mean, these were some of Grant's friends too. Um, yeah. But you recently have, this is another part of your podcast where you talk about feeling lonely and people not understanding you and your friends having different um, experiences. No, having different um, uh what's important to them, what they think about in life. Different values. There's different values, right. Um, and you've since, and so I was going to say that there is definite merit in going deep with your friends, even if you don't think that 
even if you haven't before, if you, if your friendship revolves around basketball and you don't know these people, when you put yourself out there and you start talking about these things. Right. And you've also had this happen just recording with people. Yeah. You start talking about important things and then people share. And so yep. that's a way to develop deeper friendships. And you've done that recently with your core group of friends. And how yeah. does that feel? Does it feel less lonely? Does it feel... I mean, um, I would say that that conversation that I recently had mm-hmm. at the event, mm-hmm. you know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. I walked away from that feeling like less lonely. Mm-hmm. It felt good. I was mm-hmm. like, that was meaningful. It felt seen in a way that I often don't by my peers. Um, it feels good, but I would say if you don't have an issue making friends, you don't have an issue making friends. Like you will figure it out. If you're charismatic and socially capable and self-aware and a nice person, then even if you're not particularly charismatic, but I, I just mean, say, yeah, yeah. Aren't. A lot of people what I, are. what I, I didn't mean charismatic. I meant socially capable, mm-hmm. capable of capturing someone's attention for any amount of time is what I'm saying. Having a conversation with someone, uh, then you don't need advice really. Just hope. If Some you have people shitty find friends, that very difficult. Uh, that's what i'm getting to yeah go ahead the people who really struggle Mm -hmm. i would say scour youtube (laughs) for videos on how to make friends because that shit is out there people are making videos on everything now on like Mm -hmm. how to think better how to speak more articulately Mm -hmm. how to be how to have confidence how to be charismatic how to make friends how to meet women or men whatever yeah i'm not the guy for that i haven't thought that through enough to give good advice on how to make friends because there's some people who have, who are shy or awkward yes, or right. maybe have like difficult personalities or mm-hmm. interests. Mm-hmm. And I would say don't lose hope if you're one of those people. Cause there's a lot of people yeah. out there like that. I also they think can... making friends or learning how to be a friend that people want to be friends with mm-hmm. is a skill like everything. And so you should go learn how to, if you're weird, I'm weird. I don't mean it in a disparaging way, but if you're fucking weird and it's hard to make friends, you're not doomed. You can learn how to make friends and enjoy it. Agreed. Um, yeah, episode seven was full of lots of little nuggets. It was chock full. One guy at the beginning of his comment said, dude, there's so much to unpack in this episode. Really? <clears throat> mm-hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. He went on to say many good things. You have so many. I wish I had access to your comments right now because there's a lot of nice ones on there. Mm. I wanted to read them, but we probably don't have time. Uh, And then the Lexapro experience. Also, someone on there asked about your Lexapro experience. And first of all, are you still on five milligrams? Yeah. You didn't go up because you talked about that you were going to go up. Yeah. And Quitting coffee. I was about to go up. I was about to, which is hilarious. It's a stereotypical drug trope mm-hmm. is let's increase this other drug instead of maybe getting rid of another drug that might solve the problem, which is something to look at for people. If you're on multiple things, not just pharmaceuticals, but you know, caffeine, alcohol, weed, whatever, cigarettes, nicotine. Uh, yeah. Maybe you, your solution is not taking more meds, but getting rid of one right. of your other chemicals. Yes. You hammered that. Because in the that episode, taking good. getting rid of the coffee mm-hmm. did exactly what I was seeking for the Lexapro for increasing Lexapro to do. If that was in episode seven, you hadn't even quit coffee yet. That's funny. You said all that. No, I, I think, think I did. I went on a rant about that, and I had in a le- oh, because right. I quit coffee. So it was either that episode, or maybe I'm talking about something else. Yeah, maybe maybe it wasn't in there. Okay, anyway. Uh, episode eight, we go to possible causes of mental health. So at seven minutes in, you talk about your sensitivity. Um, and you were always a sensitive kid, which we've discussed. But um, Yeah. I mean, before anything, when you were just a natural little baby, 
just a crossword would melt you. So I've always been sensitive to bad energy or negative energy or whatever that is. Aggression. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I was in line today at <laughs> the store. Yeah. And there was a really long line and I was about to get in it. And then all of a sudden 20 people, like uh, someone like beat me right to the spot. And I was like, oh, okay. And then I went and then someone beat me to their spot and it happened six times. No. Yeah. And all of a sudden there was a huge line that I kept going, oh, no, oh, oh, oh. And then it was like, <laughs> and some older lady took pity on me. She was with like her daughter and her friend and like they had a cart. And she was like, oh my God, you have bananas. Come here, get in front of us. Oh. And then I was like, and then she, I could tell immediately she was going to be chatty. She wasn't weird. She was just. Social, happy. Mm-hmm. And I started sweating. <laughs> I was already sweating from basketball. I had come from basketball and then I started sweating because I was like, I have to talk to this lady for the next seven minutes in line. And I was you, like, oh my God, you? I'm sweating right now. I know I can handle this. This is not a problem. I know how to handle this, but it made me start sweating immediately. Yeah. And she said like a few things to me. This, that's how sensitive I am. That's crazy. Does that happen to you? Do you get sweaty if you know you have to talk to a stranger? Like, do you immediately feel your pores start? No. Because, like, I get, like, cold spots everywhere, and I know it's because I'm starting to sweat. No. That's how sensitive I am. No. I can't say that I share that. Which is weird, because it's like, I know how to handle it. I don't know why. Were you hungry? Yeah, but it wasn't wasn't that. No. Well, that's It happens to me even when I'm enjoying it. Like, it's not like I'm just Um, nervous. I just get anxious about it. Hmm. Yeah, I'm. I think your brother would say he's the same with that. You think? Although maybe he's better at the small talk. I don't know. Anyway. Um. Oh, yeah. You're trying to connect your issues. Oh, you were going back to your childhood. This was a difficult episode for me. Uh, this is not about me. So I just <laughs> Fine. like to no, say... No, it is about you. You're here. I would just like to apologize for not... F- it feels like a failure when you talk about those things. Like I wasn't there, but I should have been there or I should have known or I oh, should have... Go. I, I don't know. Forgive yeah. yourself, please. I don't blame you. I wasn't being all. myself up until I listened to your podcast. <laughs> yeah, but did I'm I blame kidding. you? No, no. Not at all. It wasn't anything to do with me. It was things that happened at your father's house. Mm. I'm just saying, as your mother, yeah. I feel like, you know, I should have been able well, to save you from that. And you also talked about wanting to connect those uh, experiences with your sexual health now, but you just did. What I mean, of course, those informed. Mm. Of course. Connected. Mm. You don't have to really dive there anymore. I mean... Sure. I guess I just want to draw logical, sequential steps of how... Or like, I want to understand the cause and effect in detail. I'm just saying like... Well, I think that you think there's something to fix. And if you do that, that maybe you can... Um, like reverse engineer trauma. Basically. Right. Sure. So, okay. I'm sorry. I can't help you with that. <laughs> Um, I remember at your age, well, yeah, probably from my twenties through, I don't know what age I was connecting a lot of my, um, imbalances to my upbringing. Mm -hmm. I mean, I remember doing that a lot. I think everybody, not everybody, but a lot of people like to go through that. Yeah. Well, I'm happy to report at this age now. I don't give a shit anymore. And I assume that'll happen to you as well. Great. (laughs) Yeah. I don't care anymore. It doesn't matter. Um, And then in this specific episode, one of your followers commented that you should love yourself more. And maybe that would just take care of it. And Hmm. I remember reacting to that comment thinking, no, I mean... I understand that and that sounds nice and it sounds, um, it's a good sound bite. But I think, first of all, you have a healthy love yeah, for yourself. Yeah, I have self-love. Yes, you do. Mm-hmm. And 
also wanting to evolve. That mm -hmm. doesn't mean you don't love yourself. Yeah, it's both. I rec recognize both. And I think we should all be evolving. I think that's important. So, I also think I'm critical of myself. It com comes from a place of love. Okay. I don't. I'm not abusing myself. So I'm like, come on, man. You you can do better. You are. It's not like you should be better or you suck. It's like I'm recognizing my potential and I'm saying you're not doing good enough because you are. Maybe she just listened to the clip. Maybe she. This is the only episode she listened to. I don't know, but. Yeah, I'm very verbally critical of myself. Yeah, right. but I don't think I have and a so problem. I could see how she. I don't walk around. There, you know, uh, what do they say? Putting myself down. <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't. You don't know. Uh, anyway, that's why I had that reaction because you're not that person. No. Um, but thank you. Oh, episode nine. I have to move to my notebook now on being vulnerable. You were venting and being vulnerable. Oh, at two, two and a half minutes in, a little longer than that, you mentioned that between two and a half and three cups of coffee in at 3 p.m. That's all I heard. Does that sound like a lot to you and late in the day now that you're off of coffee? Does that sound crazy? No. It doesn't? No. No, because look how much coffee most people drink. Yeah, but those are people I think because that's it doesn't average. affect them anymore. I think anymore. two to three is average. But I also don't think coffee like... was affecting my sleep like that. Yeah, I don't think that sleep. I was sleeping shitty or anything. So I'm saying late in the day, what does that what does it have to do with anything? If it's not about the sleep. I guess. True. I guess I just wanted to know how you felt about that. Mm. Two and a half to three cups of coffee at three. No. Okay. Um, okay. Also, a lot of great comments on that episode also. Um, can you give us an example of, oh, you, well, maybe it's affirmations. So I created affirmations for myself, but it was easier for me when I, when I listened to other people's, mm -hmm. I guess. Um, and you don't have to, Tell me or tell I'll, the world care. what I'll yours what are, but you can do that. I won't say all of them just because it's boring. Okay, but, well then uh, just say some because uh, they work. Some of them are things that I specifically want to be, and some of them are things that are more, they just feel good to say. They don't have a specific representation to me mm -hmm. of something. I just, like I say, I am peace, I am love. Those two are like, well, peace is like, I want that. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying I am. Because I'm using the trick. Yeah, I'm affirming. Right. I am peace because that's what I want. Mm -hmm. Love is like, I don't know, what the hell does that mean? It just feels good. I believe in love. I know what the action of love is. I am love. You are love. That's one of your superpowers, by the way. Thank you. Go ahead. Uh, I am peace. I am love. I am joy. Mm -hmm. Um, There's a bunch like that. I say I'm optimism. I am faith. And there's a few more. But the most important part, well, a very important part is at the end I say I am in the company of the universe and the universe is in the company of me. And every time I say the first one, it mm -hmm. feels like I'm not alone. Even if it's just 1%. Most of the time it's very small. Mm -hmm. And every time I say the second one, I feel powerful. Because mm. it's like, it's not just like, like I have the universe's back. Mm -hmm. Like we always say, you know, like God has my back, the universe has my back, whatever. Mm -hmm. But it's like, you are also part of the universe. So anyway. Okay. Thank you. That's good. That's what I wanted to know. Um, we already talked about you not upping your dose. I do love your breakdown of how medication is, how you can use it in a healthy way. It's not the end all. Right. Like what it does for you. That was such a mm -hmm. great explanation. And the point of you having to figure all that out on your own. Oh yeah. Is the reason for your, your podcast because you have figured these things out that no one has helped you with. Right. 
In fact, it's crazy how they don't explain things. Even yeah. people who know what they're talking about and can help you, they just help you. So, right. So, but I guess some people, that's what they want. They just want to be helped. They don't need to understand. That's true. But I also, I don't know if it's that professionals want you to keep coming back or if they really don't know or they're just have, they're tired of their jobs or if they can't cross a certain line because they don't want to be responsible for whatever they tell you. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is, but it seems like they're withholding a lot of information. Like how can those people not have the answers? They've seen so many patients. They've done the schooling. I mean, anyway, the point is. Oh, the system is broken. Yes. You've had to figure all of this out on your own. And so um, you, you started. Okay. So you started when this happened. You went through a whole rigmarole of fixes, places that you were looking to get um, some relief. You did blood tests, you saw therapists, you saw hypnotists, you saw doctors, you did acupuncture. I did do a hypnotist for um, sleep. Yeah. I mean, you, you did it. You did. That was such a clear, like, how could this work? <laughs> but I when believe in hyp- hypnosis. But you're searching for an answer. You were really searching for the answer as yeah. to why this happened. And so you, and in some cases, blood tests will... Uh, uncover mineral or vitamin deficiencies in people that so severely that if they take that thing, you know, it'll help their mental health. So mm-hmm. that those cases are out there. They're probably not the norm, but that happens. Um, but none of that stuff helped you. No. So you did all of that stuff and really none of it helped you. No. No. Here's actually, don't forget what you're saying, but I just had a, a realization right okay. now that's important. Okay, good. There's a couple possibilities here or a combination. Mm -hmm. Either the medication's doing the heavy lifting or my brain is healing itself or I'm just doing all the things to allow my brain to heal itself. Mm -hmm. Any one of those is hugely important to acknowledge. The The ketamation. If the medication is working, it just is so upsetting that... uh, I've went on about this before, but the people who say that like medication doesn't work or they just demonize it, mm-hmm. it's just like fucking so stupid. Like, why do people have to take a side? Mm-hmm. Or the things that I'm doing, like something's working is my point. Something's happening. Mm-hmm. Um, it's all the tangible things. It's you quitting coffee. I, you may not think meditating is helping, but I think that it's doing something. It's the exercising. It's the eating healthy. It's the praying and cultivating a spiritual practice. Um, you like nature now, which I love because nature used to bore the shit out of you. It's still, and you, you talk it's about still it could. in a nice way though. You talk about it in a... I just am doing it in my way. I mm-hmm. love sitting outside in the mm-hmm. sun. I crave the sun. I love trees. But I've always loved trees. Mm-hmm. Both of those things I've always liked. I think just like going and sitting in nature. What about a hike? I can't. You still not like a hike? No, I don't think so. <laughs> I think you have to be a relaxed person to enjoy a hike. I don't think I'm a very relaxed person. Oh, you know what? One of your listeners, because this was a comment on the YouTube channel, um, mentioned ADHD, that it had taken them 30 years, I think, to get that diagnosed Mm -hmm. and that there's just so much more to it than being fidgety and your mind wandering and all that. Mm -hmm. And that um, they suggested that you explore that. Okay. I yeah, I just don't see the utility in it right now cuz I'm addressing all of the components and manifestations of what right, that is. Right, right, right. They so, they their comment was oh, so many of the things that you were experiencing fall under ADHD. I mean, the depression, the anxiety, a lot of it falls under there also. Um Yeah, but what's I don't know. Anyway. How does that 
I, I appreciate that. Sometimes it's comforting to like put a label on it, but how does that help me find the solution? Because what, as far as I know, mm-hmm. all of the solutions, all of the things that help that are either ADHD medication, which I'm not going to take. Right. Or uh, mindfulness, CBT, CBT, yeah, CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's all just the same shit. Right. Okay. Um, are you still tired? In that particular episode, you were just tired of the whole experience. You were just tired. No, because it's not. My brain's not being attacked all day by itself. Mm-hmm. That's so funny. You, hadn't quit coffee you know what? It's almost like depression. I hadn't quit coffee. Well, that's mm-hmm. why. This is episode nine. Uh, it's almost like depression is an autoimmune disease of the brain. Of your thoughts. It's literally your your thoughts attacking yourself. Mm-hmm. Your brain is mm-hmm. attacking yourself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. I don't know if there's anything there, but that's like what you're, when you have autoimmune disorder. Well, let's write it down. Disease, that's what, I don't remember. Okay. Um, oh. Yeah, do you still want to get out of Dodge? You talked about how, I can't remember why you were feeling like this, but. You just wanted to have a farm and, you know. Yeah, I do. Vegetable garden. And- yeah, it's really confusing, like, rapidly feeling this better because. That's why I'm wondering. Because all I of a sudden I'm like, oh, mood. some of this shit is cool. But. I don't know. This kind of. I don't know. It's too early to tell. I think I'm going. I'm I mean, does experimenting. That still sound yes, it's still like appealing. It's still in the uh, experiment. It's still like a component of the the equation, possibly. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. I'm able to enjoy this modern society a little bit more now, but it, there's something that remains, even when I feel good, that feels like this is all. Not all of it is wrong, but there's something um, fundamentally wrong about this whole system. Cities, modern society. Yeah, hundred percent. Fundamentally. Yep. And I don't. It's like I don't want to participate in it until it's fixed. Yeah, <laughs> I'm seeing all of the people commenting, going, "You can't run away from it. Why don't you be part of the um solution?" I think what I would be doing is part of the solution. Yeah, I mean. It's a lot to fix. Yeah. It's a lot to fix. Okay. Um, oh, you. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't like, like when I go to Air One. Yeah. It feels bad. It fe- It feels like this is so wrong. Look at how much luxury we have. This is incredible. This place is unbelievable. Unreal. The shelves are stocked. Every kind of fucking high quality treat you could imagine. And then there's people just like literally right outside that have fucking nothing mm-hmm. and they're just suffering. And mm-hmm. it's just like, it's this, it's so unsettling to be in that store. Like, I'm going to go back because I love the shit they have, but like, that feels weird. That feels like a problem that doesn't just feel like, well, like you can't just say, well, they got themselves there. It feels like it's all connected. It is all connected. Like it's... we, the fact, like it feels like they're suffering somehow be, we, be, because we have this, that's happening. Do you know what I mean? Yes, I know exactly what you mean. I've been feeling like those feelings and thinking those anyway. thoughts for. I know, but there's so many smart people who are also like, years. they're not connected and I haven't directly. Done anything other than just try to help, you know. Like people are like, you can have a, a, a twenty five thousand dollar watch. On you not having a twenty five thousand dollar watch doesn't help. You know, unless you do something with that twenty five thousand dollars instead but of buying the watch. Their point is like, where does it stop? Where does it stop? Then okay, then you shouldn't have that watch. But then okay, then you shouldn't drive that okay. car. Then you shouldn't have that much. I'm gonna get biblical on you for house. a second. <laughs> A rich man has a better chance of getting no, no. Hell, I was going to say that, heaven, but this is right. why. A, a, 
a camel, or a camel has, has a better chance, chance of going get, through the eye of a needle, needle than a rich, rich man, man getting into heaven. Getting yeah. into heaven yeah. No, I wasn't going to say that, but um, but this is that. I uh, something I read was. I think it was Jesus telling everyone to, everybody had to sell everything they had and put it in a pot. And then that is dispersed throughout the land and everybody gets what they need. That sounds like communism. And then, I know, right? That's why this doesn't I know, work. I know, but I'm just going to say, and then there was the farmer and his wife and they held back like 25% or whatever it was. And Jesus said, why aren't you giving me everything? And... They felt shameful, but I think they died because of that. <laughs> See, <laughs> anyway, Jesus doesn't my, sound like a cool my, guy. If that's, I, I mean, I don't remember, but but that's, I mean, you know, the Bible's full of that crazy stuff. Um, however, as I'm reading that, all of those thoughts come up: the imbalance of wealth. That's just highlighted in that story. Um, because, yeah, if we all did that, if there was something, like not everything that you own, but... But it shouldn't be equal. There shouldn't be an enforced equal outcome, is what I'm saying. That doesn't make sense either, because nature is no, not no, like that. people... Some people are more successful than others. I think well, that's just nature. But And it just some people seems have more opportunity than others. The gap is widening. That's what it is. Yes, the gap is widening. That's the problem. And so... No, yeah, I, I it think It just seems that, like everyone should have their basic human needs met. Yeah. Period. Yeah. There just should not be people suffering. Yeah, we shouldn't get everyone... having, you know, 30 cars. Until everyone has their basic needs met. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It's just simple. It's just simple humanity. Maybe Erwan. I don't know how to fix Erwan's it. a bad example. Anyway, I'm sorry. We're sorry, Erwan. Maybe we can have that still. But certainly billionaires who... I mean, it's just like, what... I don't know. I'm hesitant to demonize billionaires like everyone does these days because, like, I feel like that's such a complicated problem that, like, how can we... Is everybody most of, demonizing billionaires these yeah. days? Yeah. Hmm. It's, like, a big thing. Maybe it's the younger generation. Hmm. Like, even younger, maybe my generation. They're, like, hmm. billionaires should die. Like, everyone well, just hates is, like, or, we don't care if billionaires die. I like, mean. they think it's funny. Like, the whole submarine thing. Oh, Pete, there's, yeah. I saw so many people like I know posting going no. like, ha, 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 idiots. And I'm just like, oh, no. Yeah, maybe they were dumb. Maybe they were greedy. But they don't But like, that's not funny. Like that. Of course, that's not no. funny. I don't think billionaires. Oh, my gosh. Maybe some of them are evil. Just because, but. Well, of course, some of them are evil and some of them are wonderful. And so that's not our job. It's just money is and money's so complicated. How can you have the hubris to think that you can judge someone? You don't know what it's like to have billions of dollars. You don't know what that game is, so you can't judge it until you understand it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Anyway. Um, you were also pleading for someone at the end of that episode to tell you that everything is going to be okay. So everything is going to be okay. <laughs> we talked about this at the beginning. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Um, you wanted someone on your, you wanted someone on your ship. You wanted some helpers. I think I wanted like. God. Yes. I wanted a divine oh, sign. Yeah. That's what I, wanted, I was going to say. You I said you're see, steering your own ship. You're the captain of your own ship. Yeah. There's, you, need, you need a father figure or what? Yeah. That's yeah. what I was going to say. Yeah. Yeah. God is steering your ship and that's. Can he just leave like a sentence in the leaves or something? Yeah. I don't know why it has to be so. Well, it's not always. That's why you got to write your synchronicity journal because. It's My only that. explanation for why you don't get letters from God yeah. telling you oh, it's telling you what to do or everything's going to be okay is because uh, if you get that, then you don't you get the real, you don't develop the tools, you don't have right, the skills, then there's no work involved. you don't develop faith. And I can't remember why someone explained why faith is such an important uh, faith is like a I can't. Oh, I watched a good video. Jordan Peterson talking to someone else, talking about why society, a faithless society, is dangerous. Because like faith unites us somehow when we. Because like if we don't have faith or or lack of a spiritual 
society, then we start to think too much of oh. ourselves or like we can run shit or something. I don't remember. I'm not. I just, I liked it. I was like, okay. Mm. Okay, keep going. Like okay, episode 10. I know. I we're, Well, the good news is there's only 11 episodes and we're okay. on 10. So um, at 15 minutes and 15 seconds on episode 10, you talk about that your mom sent you an article on spiritual awakenings. And you didn't read it. Mm-hmm. And then you said it's an elusive term. Yeah. So I pulled up that article mm-hmm. that I sent you that you never read. Okay. And it's 21 um, signs that you're going through spiritual awakening. Mm-hmm. And if I were to pull that out right now, the audience that has followed every podcast would be rolling on the floor laughing <laughs> because almost every single one that it says you've talked about in your podcast verbatim, the, you know, whatever it says you're going through. Mm-hmm. So it just seems like, you're for sure going through a spiritual awakening. And I'm not the only one who sent you an article. You said lots of people have sent you stuff. Not lots of people, but... But I'm wondering if up. the problem is just naming it for you. Like, what what's the benefit of naming it? I mean, I don't think that you think there's a benefit no, in No, 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 no. It. Naming it's fine. It's... The name has been appropriated by... Substanceless spiritual seekers. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But But that happens with everything. Of course. Yeah. I mean, obviously, it's just something that's so common that people go through whatever you want to call it. And there are... Yeah. True. A certain number of commonalities. Yeah. I mean, and honestly, at this point, like, I'm ready to... I'm ready to buy crystals. I don't, I'm, I don't care. I'm open. Let's do it all. Honestly, I can't tell you they don't work. So yeah, maybe I'll buy some. Oh, you were also talking about, um, do you have crystals? No, I mean, I might have one or two. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. (laughs) I saw a lady once and she told me I needed oh, that's to right. talk. And I remember. You know, the weird thing, though, about that lady is she told me to write. She said, not for anyone else, for yourself. Mm. You need to be journaling. Mm. And then someone else, spiritual, said that same thing to me. That's been coming up a lot for me lately. And It's funny you mentioned that. Yes. And it turns out that that has become a big thing for me. We talked about it earlier Writing. when I go back to and look at my journals, how it is an affirmation that, mm-hmm. you know, these things are real, that I'm not making them up. Right. Anyway. So it's been very helpful. I can't remember her name, but thanks. Um, also, Oh, you talked about how you are starting. <laughs> you're starting to care less about how you look. Um, and you said, this was at 27 minutes, you said... Still a hard one. I hope that's where I'm headed because it feels good. You still there? Yeah, I don't know if I just like the way I look lately <laughs> or <laughs> if I'm accepting it, but I'm also still trying to be... I'm still doing a diet and working out and trying to look different. Why? I mean, I just think it's important. It's healthy and also, I don't know, I just want to look better. What's wrong with that? Nothing. I think that... Nothing if, if it's if it's not an obsession, if you're not upset when you look at no, yourself. I'm not if upset. you just feel like I can be better. Honestly, better as long as I stay myself. tan, I'm happy. That's good for you now, but later that's not so good. Maybe not. But I, but I maybe. But I spent a lot of time in the sun when I was younger. So, um, I mean, I have lots of suns, but whatever. Okay. Um, something you said. Oh, about diet. Yeah, you were reluctant to talk about it because you said you were confused. There's so much information out there. Yeah, I have. Are you still confused? Literally, no fucking clue. Yeah. Okay. 
I'll probably, now that I'm off coffee, yeah. because I think when you're doing stuff like that, it's hard to get any actual data from your experience. When you're affecting your chemicals that way. Yeah. You know? Yep, yep. So this time, like I noticed, now that I'm mm-hmm. not on coffee, the days when I eat a big protein breakfast, mm-hmm. I'm not hungry for a well, long time. Well, that's scientific. That's because it takes longer to digest your protein. It's, it takes a long time, so it stays in your stomach longer. They tell you if you want to not be hungry throughout the day to yeah. eat some protein in the protein morning. Protein and fat. But what was the other thing uh, that I noticed? I think it maybe makes me feel... calmer or something like i don't get i don't get the crash okay well there you go because for you when you do get hungry you start to get anxious that's what it was yeah i forgot that's what it was when i get hungry Mm -hmm. i don't get anxious now when i have lots of protein really yeah so maybe it's a blood sugar thing oh maybe oh probably it sustains that sounds right so i think in order to really know i think you gotta be for this I think you got to be doing blood tests. Okay, I will. Just so you have something to compare. I was yeah. eating this then, and these were my results, and I was eating this way then, and these are my results. If you're going to do the experiment, do the whole thing. Yeah. At the end of episode 10, so at the beginning, in episode one, you say, I don't know how to sign off. I don't know what my signature thing is going to be. Yeah. And then you never really talk about it again, but you say I love you at the end of every episode, except for episode 10. Do not say I love you. Uh-huh. You okay. say bye bye. All right. And then end of episode eleven, you didn't say it again. Well, you said bye bye. You know what? Sometimes I'm not in the mood. <laughs> oh well, you also said is saying I love you from some guy on the internet. Well, yeah, even? it feels but a little empty. Do- no, but I think it does. Does Be- it? Yeah, because you, because you're sincere. That's who you are. You mm. do love people. And you want people to feel love. If it's the only voice they hear the whole day saying, I love you, I think that matters to you. Okay. If I knew that someone felt it when I said it, if it made a difference, then yeah, I'd keep saying it. Because I do mean it. But it felt like so easy. It felt just like meaningless because it's like anyone could say it. Like, is there something I can do? Like, just keep on doing the podcast. That's the proof. That's like the I love you. It's like the action. I love you. I'm doing this because I love you. So you can say it because it's okay. not empty. All right, I'll say it. Because there's a whole however many minutes preceding that I love you. Okay, good point. Okay, let's get back to that. Um, And so now we're at episode 11, and it's just about the quit and coffee. You quit coffee! Yay. How long has it been? You don't know. I mean, no, I don't. I wrote it in my journal. You did? Yeah. So it's probably been... Which journal? Five, five, six weeks? No, longer than that. Yeah, it's been longer than that. Mm-hmm. Couple months? I think months? it's been like two months. Okay. The experience that preceded... Oh, you also had said you'd stop journaling. I think that was in episode 10. You said you weren't writing stuff down in your journal anymore. Have you picked that back up? I don't know what journal. I have so many journals. I know you do, but this was the journal of just recording your day. Oh, yeah. I did that. I stopped that a long time ago. So many months. It was too... I know. Those are the things that help you when you go back. Too tedious. I know. What's the word? (sighs) Litigious is not the word, obviously. (laughs) No. But it sounds like litigious. (laughs) What are we describing? It's like something that's tedious or detailed. Well, or, tedious sounds no, like. No, but it's not the one I'm looking for. Uh, or what's the word for something that is very uh, dry and data heavy and like scholastic and it sounds like litigious. Um, it's not litigious. I, we'll think of it as soon as we turn off the camera. But you know what word I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, it occurred to me, sorry. No, it's fine. It was just about the coffee. How's it going? We, you've it's already great. said. It's fucking great. It's the best decision I've ever made. Wow. I can't believe it. <laughs> I don't understand. The experience preceding that, which was listening to the two podcasts, and it just. The coffee was making my mind attack me. Maybe it was an autoimmune response. Right. But I had nothing ever said. 
But I guess it wouldn't. I guess the test wouldn't say I'm allergic to coffee or have a reaction to coffee. That's different. Right. Maybe that's why a, those tests That's the are... other thing is like, you have to go by your experience. Yep. Because maybe there's some other complicated thing that there's no fucking test for. Maybe it's some, maybe there's mold or toxins on the coffee or like, you know, something that I'm particularly, I don't know. Or maybe it's just the caffeine. Maybe I'm, it could be anything. Who fucking Anything. Knows? But the point is... Your experience is your experience and no one else can tell you what the hell they think. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Coffee made me attack myself <laughs> every day and I couldn't stop doing it. And I was using the coffee to combat the coffee. I know. I was drinking more coffee because the high was I like, know. okay. That's classic drug addiction. Using the drugs to deal with the drugs. Yep. Well, chasing the high. and then. Well, yeah, but... I also didn't realize I was suffering because of the drugs. Again, classic drug addiction. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, that. so my question that I didn't finish was the podcast preceding mm -hmm. that, that whole synchronicity thing. Did you write that down in your synchronicity journal? What? That what the led event? up to you quitting yeah. coffee. You listen to those two podcasts. Oh, no, I just watched two uh, two YouTube clips. Okay, that, whatever. Right, two clips. Uh, mm -hmm. I think so. Well, it should go in there. I'll get it out. You also said coffee was exacerbating your symptoms. That's still holding true? My, they might have been causing them. Oh. I don't even know. Okay. So, yes. Mm. But, like, since quitting coffee? Mm-hmm. Everything's been different. So different. I feel way more normal. Wow. That's ginormous. It's, it can't be understated. <laughs> this is why you should be willing to listen to your own podcasts. Why? Because you are making grand statements like that that are very true. And who knows... In 10 years, if you'll be drinking coffee again. <laughs> no. You said that about the alcohol every time you made it through. Every time you got into an episode, you said, I'm never drinking again. And then you'd get no, out there's of only it for one time. Years. No, there's only one time. One time. That you said that? Yeah. And then I waited seven years. And I was like, okay, I'm going to experiment. I never knew. I never thought alcohol was part of it until the one time I quit alcohol. And then I quit for seven years. And then I was like, all right, maybe it's not. That was the one where you drank. It was your birthday? Honestly. Could, yeah. still, could be coffee, not the alcohol this whole time. <laughs> oh, my God. No. Oh, see? But it's not worth it because the alcohol. <laughs> well. The possible downside is not worth risking for the possible upside of alcohol. But we also know when you go, like, when you were drinking going to Hawaii, how much alcohol you consumed. You also know that come down is yeah. physical. And so. Yeah, but, like, it lasted a year. So. I don't even think <laughs> I drank coffee think the whole time. Yeah, but was, I'm saying I'm saying Oh yeah, shit, that's a good point. <laughs> I wonder how, if I had quit coffee at the beginning. But didn't I quit coffee for like a few days? Oh, during did this you? episode? I don't remember. I just remember that one of your therapists said it you can keep drinking coffee. It's I remember I planned on quitting. Maybe I started to stop it. I think you were thinking about it, and they were like, "That's it's too brutal right now." I think I had one Don't or two days that. off of it. They didn't even say it's too brutal right now. They were just like, "No, keep drinking coffee. It's fine." Mm. That's why I said, "Don't listen to anyone." Something's telling you. Be an advocate for yourself, them. people. Listen to your body. Listen to your brain. Um, we're done. Okay. Thank you. Wait. I have one thing to say. No. Oh. <laughs> when I was a nanny, I was a nanny for a family for 10 years, um, and they had three little girls, and my boys were teenagers at the time, and she asked me, because she would, her girls would come in and sit on her lap and hug, and you know, they were always very affectionate, and they're all over you when you're little. When they're little. And she said to me, how do you handle this when your kids are bigger? 
that they don't do this anymore. Because it sucks because we're the same people, but, you know, the kids grow up and they don't do that anymore, but we haven't changed. So we just all of a sudden don't get that anymore. And I said, um, at night when I go in my kids' rooms, they let me sit and talk to them. And so I just sit for as long as they'll talk to me. And that's the same thing. Mm-hmm. Thank you. <laughs> this is, is this something that we talked about on the podcast? No. <laughs> Sentiment that I've mentioned? <laughs> oh, anyway, I'm a sentimental person. And so I am not. Thanks for sitting and talking to me. That's all I want to say. Oh, okay. I was wondering. No, that's it. Where that was going. That's where it's going. Of course. Thank you, mom. Those are my hugs and my. Thank you, mama. Okay. I love you. Love you too. (laughs) And we love you guys. I love you.